LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. So we head to the UK Parliament this week and we talk a lot about the options that are before the House of Commons this week and we've been speculating for the last hour as to what we think may or may not happen. We've heard very little about the House of Lords and what role they may or may not play. It'd be useful to get up to speed uh, with that. And and joining me uh, to talk through these things, uh, debate these things and take some calls from you is prominent Labour peer, Blairite, and supporter of the so-called People's Vote campaign, Lord Andrew Adonis. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Nigel. <laughs> Welcome. Um, this is good, because this is actually is how debate ought to be conducted, uh, and it's very, very important. I was asked a question before the break. Leslie from Cheshire said, Nigel, please ask Adonis on my behalf why his opinion and vote to remain overrides the opinion and vote of the people. Uh, yeah, well, my, my opinion and vote doesn't override them, which is the reason why I'm in favour of people's votes, but, so that uh, everyone but gets, what a she's say, saying is, gets, gets a say, and but not, Leslie's not saying just we, people like me. But Leslie's saying that we had the vote already. Yeah, but of course the point about it, which is you and I back and forth the, the whole time, is that three years ago, when we had the referendum, we didn't know what the Leave deal was going to be. It's only now that we know it uh, that we can have this uh, people's vote because people can actually vote on what they see, Theresa May's deal, which you and I agree is is a terrible deal. And indeed, if you had known that there was the Theresa May deal three years ago, I doubt you would have gone around the country saying that this was the basis on which we no. should do Brexit, but, but, would you? But then I'm in a very so, fortunate... But, but, so very... but that's why we need the people's vote, Nigel, so but, that you and I but, can But I'm in a fortunate position, arguments. of course, because I've got two options. You've got Mrs May's deal, or we leave on WTO terms, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Yeah, but you, I, mean, but, I mean, that's in the legislation. Yeah, but actually, I think, you see, I've secretly thought that on this people's vote, Nigel, you and I agree, because had you known three years ago, and many of the people who campaigned with you, that after this vote, Theresa May would do a deal which would £39 billion for less trade than we've got at the moment, with all these uh, uh, backstop arrangements in Ireland and all that, you would have said in that referendum, don't vote for this. But the point about it is nobody could have known that three years ago, because there well, wasn't a deal. Well, now that we know well, Andrew, the deal now, I, say I think the only way you're going to stop it is through a people's vote. And the only way, of course, I can stop it, those of us stop who it. take so this... I want to stop it. I want to give people the option to stop it, which is the reason why we need what, the to people's stop vote. Brexit? Yeah, I want remain on the ballots. I've been very but clear we, about but that. But we voted on that already. No, because the, three years ago, we didn't know what the Leave deal would be. Now we know what Andrew, it is, because Theresa May's negotiated. Andrew, we know I'm the really £39 sorry. Billion I'm really and all sorry that. To people should you. have a say. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but for the last few weeks of that referendum, I said again and again and again, no deal. It's better. Yeah, but that than was you. Deal. That was you, Nigel. Boris. No deal Boris is was saying. Deal. Boris was saying that we should stay in the single market and the customs union. No, he union. wasn't. He was. He said that repeatedly Andrew, through the last referendum. Andrew, that so is simply um, not true. Well, wait, Boris was. Boris. He, he said. When he, when he said first that we should converted, stay in. When he he first, said that we should stay in. When he first converted to the cause of backing leave, he was very confused over the single market. Within a week. And consistently through that campaign, he said, we're leaving the single market and the customer. And, and actually, no, so not, did every quite. single, every single leading leave and remain campaign has said no, it's not, it, a vote to leave is a vote to leave yeah, the single that, market. That, that's, that, that's not correct. You and I know that lots of leave campaigners said that we could stay in the single market and the customs union. So the... the I, I'm and sorry, that, and that's I'm the sorry, basis, I'm sorry. That's the basis no, on which Theresa May negotiated. No leading, no yeah. leading Brexiteer said voting to leave, we would stay in the single market. Not one. Boris himself said it, and he was, the, besides yourself, he was the leading uh, proponent he said it. Of, of, of leaving. But the point about it now no, no, is Andrew, that... No, we Andrew, we need to clear this yeah, up. He, he, he said, said it before we could stay. the campaign well, I don't, started. I don't think people... Uh, and, and he was a you, Remainer. So you expect He was a people, Remainer for years. Yeah, so look, you expect people to pick and choose between different statements that Boris made. Well, that, that, isn't, that isn't fair on the voters. The voters heard mm. from Boris repeatedly that we would be staying in the single no. market and the Customs Union. Well, I tell you what, I tell so, you what, I tell you know, Andrew, you, you are that's wrong. But that's the reason you, you why we need, about that's that. part of the reason why we need a people's vote. Once the campaign started, Boris was clear. Now look, we've got a big, big, big week coming up in Parliament, so let's deal with some of that, shall we? So, what do you think should happen in the House of Commons this week? What do you want to happen? Well, it, it looks to me as if almost any option now uh, requires us to have a, a longer period of... Um, of preparation or negotiation 
uh, there's there's nothing that could be done now except for Theresa May's own deal, because, of course, that could be agreed and, and be implemented, mm-hmm. which could be done by the end of March. If there's going to be a referendum, that requires an extension. If there's going to be a new deal, uh, that requires an extension. I think, actually, your option, Nigel, a WTO Brexit would require an extension now, too, because there would need to be preparations for doing that. And those haven't been made. I mean, I'm in Parliament at the moment, and I can tell you the preparations for what would happen at the end of March, because Theresa May has, uh, has been be blunt, so unprepared for this whole thing, aren't there either. So I think there'll be a majority in Parliament to extend Article 50 so that we don't uh, either crash out at the end of March or, if we go down your path, don't have preparations for it. What happens after that is all up for grabs. And that so, is the so big the argument Cooper, which I think we're going we're, we're to have. The Yvette Cooper amendment will go through. We'll I, think, go through. I think it will go through. And then if Mrs yeah. May failing an amendment to her deal, succeeding on the second or third attempt... So it, so if if the Cooper Amendment goes through and if we finish up extending Article 50 by nine months, that means we're going to fight the European elections this year, doesn't it? Well, it looks as if that's distinctly possible, doesn't it? You may, you're, we, we, you and I debate all the time your pension from the European <laughs> Parliament. It may well, be about well, to you, get... Well, it well you've got the figures get, wrong. Well, it may be about to get bigger because you could have to stand in would this you European welcome, election. Would you welcome us standing in the European elections? Well, if... Um, if the uh, Article 50 period is extended, my own view is that we shouldn't hold European elections until it's clear whether we're staying in the EU or not. I think, do you know my frank view, I think it's absurd us holding elections to a parliament which we might be leaving in a few months. But there is this business of, of the law, and if the law can't be, uh, uh, can't be amended, then it may be that we do have to have them. So I know all of your secret preparations for a new party, Nigel, they may, they may well, have to come out of the closet quite they're not, soon. They're not so secret <laughs> now, are they? I mean, I don't want to fight the European elections, but it seems to me the European treaties are written in such a way that we probably would have to. And on the on this this big push of yours for a second referendum, a um, couple of points on that. Um, it seemed that your own people uh, this week were preparing to put down Sarah Wollaston, Luciana Berger and others, and they were putting down an amendment. They've withdrawn it. Isn't the truth now that the Remain side is actually as split in many ways as the Leave side is? But in the, you've got people like you going all out for a second referendum, but there are others who see the damage that would be done in their constituencies, the the social damage that would be done by a second referendum. Isn't a second referendum looking a little bit further away this week? Well, actually, it's not that we're split, but we have the same problem in in a curious way as as you have, wanting uh, no deal, which is that uh, a lot of people who have been gravitating towards the second referendum as a way of resolving this have been scarified by Theresa May in telling them that the only way you can avoid no deal is to vote for her deal. And what she's trying to do is to rearrange her deal, to try to do some kind of a a deal on the backstop so that it pleases people like um, Jacob Rees-Mogg and co. uh, on the uh, belief that she has, and you'll be able to tell me whether it's true or not because uh, you're closer to him than I am, that Jacob might then vote for her deal if it's amended. And the issue which we have is that for as long as people think that the only other show in town is her deal, because otherwise we're going to crash out with no deal, there isn't a majority for a referendum. Until people are convinced that no deal isn't an option, I think all of the movement will be towards Theresa May and her deal. And the critical person in this will be uh, will be Jacob Rees-Mogg and that part of the Conservative Party who, until now, have been saying that they don't like Theresa May's mm. deal either because it's vassalage, we're paying £39 billion to Brussels having to implement all their rules, but with no say. All the arguments that, but that in different ways, you and I have both been making. I've been making the argument that the better thing to do is to have a seat round the table and to stay. You've been saying we should go out with a clean Brexit. And I think the big, big issue in the next few weeks is what will Jacob Rees-Mogg do? Is he going to rally to Theresa May, in which case she may be able to get her deal through, I think the or is simple. he going to stick with you? I think the answer is simple. I think if the backstop gets amended or dropped, um, then I think Jacob and, and co will not all of them, but most of them will vote for Mrs May's deal. It will then, of course, come to Strasbourg, where the final vote will be. And, and, and I have to say, I will not be voting for it. I tell you what, um, Lord Adonis, let's go to the public, because you know, I'm sure you must feel this too. So much of this debate is politicians against politicians, mm. journalists against journalists, and the great thing about LBC is it's the public. And I'm going to go to Paul in Blackburn. Paul, please ask Lord Adonis a question. Um, the first re- the first people's vote took place in 2016. The result was to leave. That result was not enacted. A second referendum would mean that for the, for the leave viewpoint to be enacted, 
Leave would have to have won two referendums. Re if Remain wins the second referendum, that means it would have only had to have won one. How's that fair? How's that fair? Well, the situation we're in, Paul, is, at the moment, if you take your view, because I assume that you're, you're at one with Nigel Farage in, in, in wanting to leave uh, without Theresa May's deal. Is that correct, Paul? You, d you don't like Theresa May's deal? Well, I'm at one with democracy, and I think the people's vote is the best form of democracy that money can buy. Yeah, but the point about it is, if what you want is Theresa May's deal, then there probably won't be a, a referendum. We can probably leave on those terms, because if all the Conservative MPs and they, with the DUP from Northern Ireland, have a majority in the House of Commons, if they all vote for it, then there's a majority. The reason why we might have a referendum is because people who take Nigel Farage's view, which is that this deal doesn't work because it still involves us paying 39 billion to Brussels for a less good access to European markets than we've got at the moment. And people who take my deal, which is the best uh, view, which is the best thing to do is to stay in. Both of us are, are very unhappy with Theresa May's deal. So the question is, if you don't like Theresa May's deal because you don't like paying 39 billion to Brussels for uh, less trade than we've got at the moment, then I think there just may be no alternative but to have a second well, referendum. Was it? Paul, let, let, following up on Paul's point, did you ever respect the result of the referendum? Was there any moment at which you thought, I'm actually going to get behind this because the people have decided? Or, or did you, from the moment you saw the Sunderland results, say, I'm going to dedicate myself to, to overturning this? Well, I thought, you see, the big problem with the referendum three years ago is that there wasn't a single leave proposition on the table. <laughs> or remain. Well, I thought... Or remain. Uh, well, well, there was. We were going to remain. What was the remain proposition? Yeah, the remain was uh, the Cam David Cameron's deal on, on immigration, and then we stay in the EU. But the EU, but, the, but the EU that, changes that every... The, but the EU changes but every few months. But they, but they hadn't changed. That was the view. I mean, I mean they and now want a European army. Yeah, but we're not joining want... the European army. We're not in well, the... Actually, we're not, we're well, actually, not in the Euro. Actually, so actually, we know, we know actually, the terms we're which cooperating we'd stay. with it already. Yeah, but we're not joining it. But the, but the well, key point, coming back to Paul's question and, and your question, Nigel, is that I thought what Theresa May would do after this referendum was to go to somewhere like the position of Norway, which was we're out of the decision-making structure of the EU, but we're very close to them in terms of the economics, so we protect our, our markets. If she had done that, I think there might have been a consensus, and I would probably then have supported it. Indeed, I didn't say much after the referendum because I just assumed she was going to do it. It's when she said that leaving the EU meant leaving the single market, leaving the customs union, which meant that we'd have fewer markets to sell our goods into and we'd have more unemployment. It's at that point that I thought that this Brexit thing wasn't viable. And of course, you know, you and I have this discussion all the time, but it wasn't clear in the last referendum campaign what uh, leave proposition there would be. And it's only since we've had that well, that I think a second referendum has become I inevitable. i tell you what, Remain was by no means the status quo either. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it's now 11.15. Well, I'm debating Brexit with Lord Andrew Madonis. I'm not sure we're ever going to agree, but hey. But more importantly, you're debating Brexit with Lord Adonis. It's your chance to ask one of the big movers and shakers behind the People's Vote campaign why he thinks as he does. There was an anniversary that passed by this week almost unnoticed. It was six years ago last week that David Cameron gave the famous Bloomberg speech where he said, if there's a Tory majority in the future, uh, I will hold a referendum. Do you think that holding referendums on big national issues is a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I'm, I'm not against uh, referendums on big constitutional issues. And, you know, we set up the Scottish Parliament after a referendum, the Welsh Assembly after a referendum, uh, the London Mayor after a referendum. So I, I'm not against them on principle. What I think was a big mistake in 2016 was to have a referendum without there being clear propositions on each side. You know, in, in the Scottish Parliament, you either wanted a Scottish Parliament or you stayed with the existing constitutional arrangements. In the case of, of the referendum we had three years ago, uh, there was a, a, a Remain proposition, but there were several Leave propositions, and that's what we've been wrestling with ever since. But you and I know that David Cameron never intended to hold the referendum. The reason he did it, it, a part of the problem underlying this is the whole thing was a fraud. He said he would do it, but he expected that he would either lose the next election or he'd still be in a coalition with the Lib Dems, so he wouldn't have to do it. So his heart was never in it. And indeed, part of the problem that we've had in this whole thing over the last uh, six years is that Cameron has been half in, half out. He couldn't quite decide whether he really thought that it was a good idea for us to be in or out. He negotiated this peculiar arrangement just before the referendum, which nobody could understand. I certainly couldn't uh, understand how it would make a big difference to what was going on before. And in the referendum campaign itself, his heart wasn't in it. And this time, if we have a referendum now, I think the people who want to 
uh, stay in the European Union like me, will have far more passion and purpose than David Cameron did. Because he was a gift to you, Nigel, because he was... Instead, you well, didn't have somebody he who was... He was a gift in many who ways. Was clear um, and determined yes, and passionate. I mean, I mean, he you allowed had somebody me. who was, who was, at best, he was the his, 51% in favour of staying in. His leadership allowed me to turn UKIP from a fringe party into a major national party mm. uh, on this and many other issues, in fact, where he didn't really uh, seem to uh, have an awful lot of conviction. I mean, I asked that because the referendum on the Welsh Assembly, whether that should be established, you know, was passed by a majority of 7,000 votes. Mm. I mean, literally a quarter of 1%. And yet the people voted for it. The political class wanted it. It happened. Here we have a referendum with quite a big majority in favour of leave, and it hasn't been implemented. And I, and, and I would reiterate to you, I didn't vote for any particular deal. I voted to leave. Yeah, but we knew what to, was... No, 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 no. With the Welsh I want Assembly. to leave. Yeah, I, do, I, I understand, Nigel, where you're coming from. Can you think that leave means leaving the single market, the customs union, As we all, all of these things? As we all did. But uh, lots of people weren't saying that on the leave side three years ago, it's which is true. why we need the referendum. But the interesting thing on the Welsh Assembly, because there's been some controversy about this recently, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, yeah. said, but aha, look at the vote on the Welsh Assembly, which was a narrow vote, but it was implemented. But Theresa May and the Conservatives voted against the Welsh Assembly in the House of Commons after the referendum on the grounds it hadn't been properly considered. So all I'm doing is playing back Theresa May's own arguments. She said then that we needed another referendum, was her argument, on the Welsh Assembly before it could be implemented, when well, we had a clearer uh, view. But there was a very well, large Labour well, majority well, well, in the House yeah, of Commons no, no, at that's the time. What, that's what she said. Well, she's the Prime Minister now. What's good for the goose is good for I, the gander. And I use exactly the same arguments. I do now not. we can see the deal. We should have a second referendum. I do not remember Theresa May ever asking for a second referendum, but I'm going to check that because I don't know. I'm going to go to Telford in the heart of England in Shropshire and speak to Ian as a new caller to the show. Ian, good morning. Good morning, Nigel. How are you? I am... Well, I'm debating Brexit with Andrew Adonis, which leaves me somewhat frustrated, but hey... Yes, but we are, we are in, both. But we are engaging in the democratic process. We do, are. do you we have are. a question? I do indeed, yeah. Um, Mr Adonis, you keep saying Lord that Adonis. we don't know what we voted for. Um, I received a leaflet from the government. I was told by leading figures of the government, not the Leave campaign, the government, that we're leaving the EU, we're leaving any jurisdiction of the ECJ, the single market, or the security that will make this country safer and stronger. What is it that we didn't understand? Leave means leave. Not leaving for a deal, we mean leave. And Ian, Ian refers there to the £9 mm. million pounds that yeah. David Cameron spent with that leaflet yeah. t- into every household, yeah. which, which, did, the- which did, Andrew, make it very clear that we were voting to leave single market etc. No, it, it didn't it didn't actually Ian that leaflet did not say we were leaving the customs union and the single market and the security arrangements of the EU. It didn't say it. What it did say is that your vote would be respected but it didn't say what it would be respected to implement. That is the key issue. If you've got the leaflet there, Ian, and read it, you'll see it, do, it yes, didn't say, do, it didn't say that we were leaflet. leaving the single market and, does, and the customs sure union. It. it doesn't. It, it, warns, it warns the country that leaving the single market would be such a yes. financial disaster. Yes, but it doesn't yeah. say... DJ. It's, yeah. it, well, why it would doesn't you say think, that we're leaving them. Why would you warn against something if you're not going to leave it? Doesn't, it? We and were it doesn't, told by David Cameron, and mo- every leave, every, sorry, excuse me, every government figure said we were leaving the single market. No, they didn't. We were leaving the jurisdiction of no. the... No, and that's, is, that's simply Ian, not correct. Ian, didn't say that, Ian, Ian Andrew, I, you know, look, as Ian points out, the leaflet was perfectly clear that leaving the single market. No, it, would did, be not, it bad. did not say that. No, it, it, did, it no, did. Well, I tell it, you what, it I'll didn't get say t- that we would be I'll leaving the, the single market and the customs union. Uh, let, ne- let, next time we debate, Nigel, let's have it in front of us because we said, keep coming. We keep coming Ian, back at this. It did Ian not say right. that we're leaving. Ian is right. It said we'd be leaving the single market. No, it did not say we'd be leaving. No, no. What Ian has just said is correct. It warned of dangers from leaving. Well, why put it in there then? It didn't say that there was a leave proposition and this is what would happen. It didn't mention the customs union. Union at all. You're twisting words here, no, it's Andrew. Not, it's not. It, You're there was twisting no, words here. There, there was no clear leave proposition, and that is the reason why Theresa May afterwards negotiated a deal, which is what we're debating now, which was a kind of half-in, half-out deal. Ian, what did you vote for, Ian? The customs union. I voted to leave. There was only two boxes on the referendum, uh, on, on the voting ballot paper, and it said to leave the EU, which I understood as meaning leave the EU, not leave for a deal or wait for a people's vote, which I noticed that no Leave campaigner is asking for, 
for the second people's vote, which is absolute nonsense. It's an MP's vote. I voted to leave. Thank OK, you. Ian, <laughs> thank you. And, and the point, very interesting, polling out two weeks ago by YouGov, giving people, albeit quite a big menu, you know, do you want to remain? Uh, do you want to have a second referendum? Do you want to leave on May's deal, renegotiate, leave with no deal? And, OK, five choices were given to people, but having a second referendum... Only got 8%. Yeah, oh, actually, that, that's not fair. If you give people the, the practical choice which you've got, which is do you or do you not want a, a people's vote, there's a majority for a people's vote. And if you ask them the three practical alternatives, which we've been discussing on your programme, Nigel, which yeah. is which is remain, Theresa May's deal, or, or your option uh -huh. of no deal, then the least popular is Theresa May's deal. That's the least popular. And so it's clear to me that the only way, if, people, if the public at large wants a choice between no deal and remain in the EU, the only way that they're going to get that choice now is through a people's vote. Do you understand, so I, I think we'll end Andrew, up coming, do you understand, coming together on this. Do you understand that if remain is on, is on the ballot paper in a second referendum, just how angry a lot of people are going to feel? Well, I, I, I and lots of other people will feel very angry if if a straightforward no deal leave is on the ballot paper, because I don't believe that that was uh, remotely uh, uh, under consideration uh, as a serious option by most voters at the last referendum either. But the thing about democracy, Nigel, as you and I know, is that the people get to choose, it's not us. Well, well, and I, so by putting well, these options on the ballot paper, it's yeah, the people I'm who happy. will make the choice, I'm happy. and not you and me. I'm happy for you to have your referendum after we've left a few years down it's the road. Bit, it's a bit late then, isn't it? No, 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 no. no. It's a bit late. You, you, we I need mean, to do it before. Seems to me or that or it's people wrong. don't have the real option to stay, well, do they? it's wrong, isn't it, to have another referendum before, before you've implemented the first, would be my view. But, hey, let's go to Stephen and just speak to Tommy. Tommy, good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, Lord Adonis. Lord Adonis, you are like a fish dangling on a line, trying to get off that hook. The democratic vote was taken. The people listened to George Osborne tell us, and David Cameron, they told us, live on TV, we would be leaving the single market and the customs union. Now, you can fiddle about and try and, and sneak out of this democratic will of the people. When do you mix with the ordinary people of Great Britain? When do you mix with the people of the United Kingdom? When do you go into a pub and talk to the people? You don't realise the anger of the seven 17.4 million people who are sick to death of you and your like trying to change our democratic vote and our will to leave the undemocratic, unelected European mafia. You do not realise the anger that is within this country. And I'll tell you yeah, one thing, well, Mr. Adonis, Tommy, Tommy, I'll Tommy, you what, I think you've, Tommy, you've, you've more than made your point. And to be fair, he is here listening to you and going to talk back yeah. to you. Uh, also, I get out and about the whole time. You know, I was in Hull on Friday in a working men's club in Beverly, which is, is, is near Hull, having just these conversations. So it's not the case that uh, I just uh, sit in London and, 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 and don't have these debates. We, we do. And actually, uh, what Nigel Farage and I have in, have in common is we both get out and about across the country a lot and what we're picking up very strongly is people do not like Theresa May's deal because it's neither one thing nor the other. Well, I'm it's sure. neither clearly staying in nor I'm is sure it Tommy, I'm leaving. sure Tommy agrees with that. And, uh, and that's why I think we should have this second referendum because what it is that Tommy himself wants which is I take it to leave without a deal that is not going to happen at the moment in any other circumstance than having a second referendum. Tommy, thank you and I'm going to ask you this question uh, I'm asked here by Tom can you please tell us Lord Adonis who is funding the People's Vote campaign? Uh, well, we're funded by a whole lot of, uh, of, of individuals across the country who passionately want uh, this whole thing not to happen. That's what's happening. Uh, you know, I'm the vice chair of the European movement, which has thousands and thousands of members, all of ah, whom pay subscriptions. Ah, but that's EU funded. Which that's is e but that's no, EU not. funded. It doesn't get any EU funding. It's funded by ordinary members of the public who are passionately pro-European. The European pro movement. Yeah. The European movement has been funded by the European Commission I for decades. I, I can assure for you. For decades. I can assure you. We're being funded by our members. Nigel, we're <laughs> not this being is really quite we're funny. Not, we're not being funded by right. the European so, Union. So, uh, but who? But who funds you? And, and is the, well, is, we have to declare it all. And George Soros. Party. And who's George fun Soros. Who's funding you? Um, so far, it's cost 150 quid. Uh, George Soros. I suspect if you fight, he's the biggest funder of the People's Vote campaign, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's. I, I, I haven't been a party to his funding, so I didn't I say what's been happening. But he is your biggest so, funder, isn't yeah, he? He, along with lots of other people, have been funding. Lots of other people have been well, funding the People's Vote campaign. Well, there's one answer, and, and I tell you what, I tell you what, 
Lord Adonis says the European movement is not funded by the European Commission. Once again, he and I disagree. Hey, there we are. We're having a good debate. We don't necessarily see eye to eye. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show. It's now 11.30 in time for the news with Philip Chrysikos. Lord Adonis, and he really believes very strongly that we didn't really quite know what we were voting for in the sense that we didn't know what kind of deal we were going to get. Uh, I have responded by saying we all knew we were leaving the, the customs union in the single market, but we are a big disagreement on that. But Mike from York wants to ask you a question. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Lord Adonis, and good morning, Nigel. Good morning, good morning Mike. Good morning. Yeah, uh, my problem is I think Yvette Cooper's uh, policy will get through, proposal will get through. So what will they put on the paper to, uh, for the candidates? in the May EU elections, the policies that we can believe. Well, I think you could argue, Mike, actually, before Andrew answers, you could argue that the actual fundamental breakdown of trust that is currently going on with this Brexit debate, you wonder whether any manifesto from any party will ever be believed ever again. Um, Mike's saying, you know, that he, that, that he thinks European elections will happen if, if this extension goes on. What would people stand for? What would they fight on? Well, I, I, they'll fight on the policies which uh, they, they support in terms of national policy, won't they? So I hope my party, Labour, will stand for an end to austerity, because austerity is the single most unpopular policy out there in the, the country at the moment. And indeed, I think it's part of the reason why Brexit happened, was that people associated the last Conservative government and David Cameron and George Osborne with, with austerity and these huge cuts in, uh, in funding for local services and the NHS. So I hope that that's what uh, Labour will be fighting on. On. But I wouldn't jump to the conclusion that there will be European elections because it would be distinctly odd to have European elections to a parliament which uh, we may be about to leave. And it's not clear to me whether it'll be possible to have this extension of Article 50 without having uh, the European elections. But if they are there, I will be campaigning up and down the country on an end to austerity and on investing in communities that have been really seriously neglected in the last, uh, in the last 10 years since the financial crash and since uh, George Osborne and David Cameron took over in 2010. Mike, tell me, would you believe a word anybody said after this? Well, the only thing they've all got to do is just put on just kidding, because Lord of Donors <laughs> keeps telling everybody, Lord of Donors keeps telling everybody jobs. Well, you know, kind of, we'll go through the list. Tourism, York, to Poland, 2005. Cabris moved to Poland, 2011, with an EU grant. Mm -hmm. Ford Transit moved to Turkey, 2013, with an EU, with an EU grant. grant. Yeah. Twinings, Poland, well... That's a good one to read for, in the Telegraph on the 6th and the 9th. Being in York, they have actually decimated and taken all jobs abroad. Um, uh, whisper that we used to make in York now ma uh, was moved to Poland and Germany. And because of the uh, low wages in this country now, it came back, as per Birmingham Post says, on the 7th of April. So, Mike, so your point thing... is, Mike, your point is that actually EU membership's been very bad for jobs. How do you respond it's to that, Lord I'm sure, like Lord Adonis's mates and all those multimillionaires, I'm sure all those people and their kids, the Europe is their playground. But well, up I, here, we've got food banks. Yeah, well, I, 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 what we need is an end to that. And we're not going to get an end to that while we're spending four billion pounds as we are at the moment, preparing for no deal, and thirty-nine billion that we're going to have to give as part of this exit deal from the EU. So if what if what people want, and I know they do want it in 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 York and uh, uh, and the North, what they want is an end to austerity, and they want investment in public services, and they want a better NHS, and they want a better education system. Then the best thing that we can do is not to go ahead with well, Brexit. No, Mike, you made some very good points there. Thank you. You mentioned austerity. Very interesting. So you know Tony Blair. Peter Mandelson, the bigwigs of the Labour Party that you work so closely with, wanted us to join the Euro. Well, we didn't join the Euro. Hang on, hang you on. Made, you made they, they wanted we us did, to join the join. Euro. We didn't join. But you wanted us to. Your gang wanted no, us we to. No, didn't. The government w of which Tony Mr. Blair, Blair led. Was a, no, Mr Blair we was decided... an outright supporter H Hold on, hold on. You're, you're, now, you're, now, you're now twisting the, uh, the, 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 the history. The government, the Blair government, decided not to join the Euro. No, we no, reviewed no, 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 it. No, 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 we no. looked at it. We decided because not to join it. Because you were trapped by the referendum promise, weren't you? No, no, we decided as a matter of principle not to. We decided that it wasn't I saw Tony Blair There was a whole economic assessment that was done by... 
I, the I saw room. Tony There's Blair sitting down. Done, Nigel, which decided not to join. I saw Tony Blair sitting down with Lord Heseltine and others, telling us that it was our destiny to join the Euro. Had we done so, we would have seen the worst austerity in the history of this nation. Yeah, but that is, of course, a, 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 a hypothetical which never came to, to pass. The government, the Blair government, t- mm. Tony Blair and Gordon mm. Brown, did an assessment and they decided it wasn't in our economic interest to join and well, we didn't join. I want to say and that's big... part of the reason why I think staying in is such a good idea because we don't have to go into the Euro, which is what we Why would you want to be in a club and not be a full member? Well, because it's perfectly possible to be in the EU and not be in the Euro. Quite a number of members of the EU aren't in the Euro. It, that's absolutely possible. And so we should only do what's the best thing for the country. And, the... Being, and being in the customs union and the single market is clearly the best thing for the country because we haven't got to pay customs duty and have big impediments to trade, whereas forcing everybody into the straitjacket of a single currency wasn't the right thing to do. It is the United States of Europe that's emerging, isn't it? No-one's pretending anymore. We've had the Elysee Treaty of 1963 updated this week by Macron and Merkel. Uh, They are heading for... They want a single income tax across the whole of Europe, a single finance minister across the whole of Europe. I mean, surely... I mean, it's logical. Roy Jenkins, I remember the late Roy Jenkins once saying, look, we, we need to make a decision in this country. Either we are a full member or we leave. And that, in many ways, is logical. Isn't the truth of Remain that the logic of remaining is that we actually take a full part in this. Well, what Roy, Roy Jenkins used to say was it was like getting on a bicycle, he used to say, which I always thought was quite funny, because the idea of Roy Jenkins on a bicycle was, <laughs> <laughs> was about as, as improbable <laughs> as, uh, as me paragliding. But, the, uh, uh, but, the, but where clearly, uh, if you look back on what happened over the last 20 years, uh, what clearly has happened is that there's developed, and I think it was r- completely appropriate once uh, France and Germany decided to create the single currency, there's developed essentially two European unions. There's the one which has the euro, and then there's the wider European Union, of which we were a part, that doesn't have the euro. And that worked fine. Some, it's although, like, you, you, although it's like the stated aim... It's like two different memberships but, but, of a club. But, but, and, and but, but the, the stated aim is we should all... The stated aim is every country should yeah, join but, the euro. But, but as you know, Nigel, we, have a, we, we, we can decide that ourselves. We're under no obligation whatever to join the euro. What you're trying to do is to scarify everybody into thinking that if we stay, we'll be forced to do this wow. army, this single currency. But it's not the case. I tell you what, we if, it hadn't been, at the moment, if it hadn't been... If it hadn't been Jimmy Gold... If it hadn't been with Jimmy Goldsmith, we'd have joined the Euro because nothing would have stopped Mr Blair. We're going to Mercia in Spain to speak to Darren, who's a new caller. Good morning, Darren. Good morning. How are you both? We are... F- <laughs> we're, well, we're, we're, we're having a good set too. I'm really here, angry Darren. here in Mercia. Yep. Um, the problem is, I think you as a presenter, Nigel, have got to start saying the honest truth to people on your radio shows because I've got the booklet in front of me yep. and it doesn't say that we're going to leave the single market, it doesn't say we're going to leave the custom u- union, what it does say is that if we do leave it, yes. we are leaving a big we are going to leave a big um, body and we're going to be worse off, we're going to have worse security we're going to have right. less jobs so there's no and implication you've literally then said, you've just literally said that there's a breakdown of trust and the breakdown yeah. of trust is from people like you so why was it in the leaflet Darren? Lives. why was it in the leaflet Darren? It was in the leaflet because it's, part, it's telling people what could happen. It didn't say we're definitely going to leave. It said if we, if we can't get it, it also could well, tell you what, Darren. that if, if no other country has managed to secure significant access to the single market. So, so all this... The implication, know, the, Darren, was clear, wasn't leave, it? It isn't. The implication was clear in that leaflet that if we voted to it leave, isn't. we'd be leaving the I single market. me. That, that, Darren is correct. It did not say in the leaflet we would, there, we'd be leaving the single market and the customs union. It did warn we'd be worse off outside the EU, but that, of course, is true, Nigel. It's no, true. it's not true. Yeah. We're, we're already anyway, seeing anyway, big Darren, moving and all that. Darren, Darren, I mean, I, frankly, to me, and I think to anyone reading that, the implication was clear, but we'll, we'll move on from that. I think this is why we need a second referendum, Nigel, because, because we're, we're, we're not even agreed on what people referendum. voted for three years ago, are we? Mis- too many miscommunications, and it just isn't fair on people. All I see from Spain is the, the, the jobs going, the people moving. I'm waiting for the positive good news story that, oh, we're leaving on March the 29th. Yep. Here's a new business coming because they're going to work under World uh, Trade Organization's rules. That isn't happening. There is no news like that, and I'm waiting uh, for Darren, that. Darren, and, and Darren, I we had the... I can't believe that in Spain, our friends here are laughing at us. They're saying, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're ruining your country. D- Darren, the, if, if you look at all the economic data recently, record employment numbers, average wages up 3.3% last year, record export figures, um, I mean, foreign reason, and direct the investment... Why we've got, Gre- the reason 
problem we've got that is because of solid plans before. It's a bit like in America, uh, Trump taking all the, the credit for what's happening in America. It's the plans that are set before. Two years ago, we triggered something that has been the most harmful thing to our country ever. Yeah, I, I, agree, with, the, I, I agree with Devin and, entirely. And the, and the problem this. is, people on the radio stations are allowed to tell lies, and people who don't do their research, who can't Google a leaflet, actually go off believing what you're telling them. Darren, it's really wrong. Darren I'm sorry, matey, but you really broadcast. are. You really are looking at this in the most bizarre way. A government leaflet says we'll be worse off if we leave, and says specifically, if we leave the single market, no. it'll be a terrible thing. And that's what, if we leave the single market, it, and you're pretending to me that voters didn't know yeah. what they were voting but, but, on. But, but Darren's completely right that this is, is how we are seen internationally. We're seen as a laughing stock because people cannot understand why when we had such a good deal in the EU with the single market, the customs deal. union, we could sell all our goods without any tariffs <sighs> to Spain and to other countries, why we're chucking that away. And as people come to understand that that's what it's what's at stake uh, they don't want it and actually it's very this conversation with uh, with Nigel is very interesting because what Nigel keeps trying to get me to say is aha if we stay what's there's a secret plan he says to force us to join what, the what? euro to join a european army to because accept he Euro- knows because he knows that european law because yeah, he knows that the customs union and the single market which is about our trade is very popular with the public mm. they don't want to be wrenched out of it and my my argument is l- now people can see that that's what's going to happen they didn't know <laughs> it three years ago give them the same the not customs pe- union not politicians deciding but the people deciding. The customs union and the single market are the trap. They're the means by which we become uncompetitive, unfit to operate our full role in the world. We're going to come back to this folks in a minute but for now this is the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage show on LBC. It's 11.45. Coming up at 12 on LBC, Majid Noirs. The next major flashpoint in the battle over Brexit will take place on Tuesday when MPs vote for their own proposals on what should happen next. Do you support Parliament taking back control? Majid Noirs on LBC. Well, by text, Mikey says, Hi, Nigel. Thanks for having Lord Adonis on the show. Listening to him gives me just a glimmer of hope that all is not lost. There we are, Mikey. You never <laughs> I, I know. Li- I like Mike. There, well, no, no, Mikey wants to... More, more of him on your show. Mikey though. wants to reverse Brexit as well. Um, I have to say, this one does feel a little bit different uh, in tone. Please don't call it a people's vote. The people had their vote. Leave means leave. Well, I agree with that, obviously. Let's go to Catherine in Romford. Catherine, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, good morning Lord Adonis. Good morning, Catherine. Hi there. So, uh, Lord Adonis, when you spoke with and met up with EU leaders, and I'm thinking about your meeting with Michel Barnier, along with Ken Clark and Nick Clegg, um, t- to discuss Brexit, what sort of tactics did you suggest to the EU to help stop Brexit? I didn't suggest any any tactics to them at all. What I wanted to hear was how they thought the negotiations were going uh, with the uh, British government, because they'd just started then. And uh, what they said, as I said afterwards to the media when we left, was um, uh, that they were in the very early stages and uh, they weren't great because... Uh, what was happening was uh, that Theresa May was asking for uh, the moon and it, it wasn't going to be possible to you know, stay in the single market, stay in the customs union, not make any exit payments. And there was this big issue, which is, of course has dogged the whole of these European negotiations about what happens with the, the border in Ireland, because everybody wants to avoid a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And nobody had a way of doing it if uh, if the United Kingdom isn't, left the EU. So that's what we discussed. Isn't Catherine time. effectively asking you haven't people like you worked with Michel Barnier against the elected government of this country? I mean, the stated aim of, the, of, 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 of this government was to take us out mm. of the European Union, out of the single market, out of the customs union. That was the manifesto they were elected on in 2010. And you've actually been working against that. No, that's not true at all. The, all of the negotiations have been done by the government, quite rightly. They are the government. And the reason we ended up with Theresa May's deal... So why did you which, go to meet... Which you but, and I, but why did you go to meet Barnier? Well, for the same reason that you turn up in the European Parliament, Nigel. Our job no, no, as no, parliamentarians, no. you're in the European Parliament, I'm in the British Parliament, is to understand what's going on. We have a duty to understand what's going on because how can we take part in debates and debate these issues? But you and Barney, but you and Barney, want to stop Brexit? Yeah, but we we weren't engaged in a negotiation. Only the government negotiates, and of course, it would be completely Mm. unreasonable to have more than one set of people negotiating. Catherine, are you satisfied with that? 
Uh, not really. Um, I think that it's fine for Lord Adonis to express his opinion. That's absolutely fine. But it does seem to me that he is trying to invalidate um, the first referendum in, in 2016. And I think it's very sad, you know, that he can't accept that result and he's in denial. And maybe he should think about going for psychological therapy, perhaps. Um, I, I think that's a bit unnecessary, that comment, Catherine, if I may say so. Well, Catherine feels strongly and it's free speech here on LBC. Thank you, Catherine. Lord Adonis says we didn't vote for an economically disastrous no-deal Brexit. However, we were warned very clearly that Brexit would be disastrous for the economy however we left. So what's the difference, says Andrew and Lincolnshire? So Andrew's making the point that we were all told, including by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, that a vote for Brexit would be economic doom. Do you understand why we've stopped believing you? Yeah, but the point about it is that the big argument, which Andrew and indeed you, Nigel, are having, actually isn't with me, it's with Theresa May. Because if Theresa May had negotiated or simply announced that the government was going to go to a Brexit which you want, which is a no-deal Brexit, they can do it. They're the government. The reason we're having this argument today is that they're not doing that. What they're doing instead is going for a halfway house, and the halfway house, of course, is pleasing no one. And that's the reason why we're in this deep crisis at the moment, is that both people who wanted, like Nigel, to leave with no deal, and people like me who think that the real choice facing the British people is still, having seen what the terms of leaving are, are to stay... Neither of us are happy, and that's why no. I think we're going to end up but with, do you with see a second a, referendum. But do you see Andrew's point? We were told half a million jobs immediately, terrible things, emergency budgets. We were told the sky would fall in if we voted for Brexit. It didn't. Do you understand why a lot of people now listen to these predictions of doom and just say, forget it? Well, of course, we, we haven't... We've heard it all yeah, before. The crucial thing is we haven't left the European we Union We were told yet. immediately. Yeah, no, but the, everybody... We were told immediately. No, but the impacts are going to kick in after we've left, and we haven't left. But we're already beginning to see what's happening in the run-up to leaving, because there's business Businesses have to make real decisions based on what's going to happen in a few months' time. We've seen, you know, James Dyson moving to Singapore, Sony moving to the Netherlands, <coughs> well, Airbus saying that they, they may close isn't down Isn't Singapore the, the warning, in a way? Isn't J James Dyson well, telling us that actually what's happening is the European market is diminishing every year in terms of its importance in the world? There's a big world out there. Yeah, but he told us that the best place to be in this post-Brexit world was the United Kingdom. And, and, then, and then he moves over to Singapore No, no, no he's still going to be here. He's still going to so, be so here. I, 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 he's still I, think, I, think, I think people are noting that, actually, he's, He's still some some of your closest allies. In fact, what are they actually doing? And of course, Singapore well, it's has a global market. Singapore has a free trade agreement with the European Union. So it's perfectly Belatedly. possible that if if Dyson is in Singapore, he'll have better access for his goods to Europe than he would have if he was He's, doing it from here. Let me assure you that James Dyson is not very excited about Europe, and indeed, only 4%... Well, cl clearly, which is why he's moving to Singapore. Only That's 4% why. of his global sales are in the UK. Yeah. A but, point that gets better. Yeah, let's, he'll, let's, get, he'll get better access to European markets from Singapore yeah, no. than he would do from here with the no-deal Brexit. It's, the, it's the eastern markets he wants. Let's take one more caller on this subject, and, and, and thank you for being a sport and staying in with us uh, and doing this. Graham is calling from Hay on Wye. Good morning, Graham. Hello, Nigel. Good to talk to you again. Hello, Lord Adonis. Hello. Um, hello. I'd like, first of all, to try and clear up this contrived confusion about why people voted to leave. It was rather simple. It was in order to take back control of our borders, our laws, our money, and our ability to trade freely with our own deals with the rest of the world. Now, anyone with any sense knew and knows in order to do that, we would have to leave the single market and the, and the customs union unless the European Union decided to bend its rules to, uh, to avoid cutting off its nose to spite its face. But they haven't done. That's not in our, that's not in our gift, it's in their gift. Now then, on to Lord Adonis. You, you, when Nigel challenged you about whether you actually re ever really accepted the vote back in 2016, you said, yes, you could have got behind a Norway-style deal, deal. Well, assuming you were telling the truth, therefore, can you therefore confirm that when you go for this new referendum are you happy for the d options on the on the ballot paper to be a norway style deal or no deal uh, no certainly not because i prefer to stay in the eu the question i was asked by nigel is after the but referendum three years ago the european union no, order, don't uh, after, and you said after, you could have got back behind yeah, the norway style no, deal uh, what i said was let's be clear what i said what i said was after when nigel said to me after the referendum three years ago would you have been prepared to accept some form of brexit at that stage if the government had sought then without all the chaos and confusion we've had in the last two and a half years to negotiate something like norway i could have lived with that without having a, a referendum but if we're going to have a referendum i think the choice that 
should be put to the British people is the one that they want and which I support, which is the option to remain in the EU. It doesn't look as if anybody, by the way, is going to be proposing in a referendum the Norway option because I don't think Nigel's going to be out there proposing Norway either. No, I mean, Nick so Bowles, that, one is, that one has now fallen by the wayside. Nick Bowles very much is. Um, Conservative MP for Grantham, and he very much is proposing Norway. And there was some thought that maybe, uh, maybe not the people, but maybe Parliament could compromise around Norway. Do you, do you, do I do you see the possibility I, I, of that? I, I don't think so, because the uh, the big problem is that for the, those on the Conservative side who are going towards Norway, they want it as an interim. They think it's a way of, of having a much longer transition whilst we decide what we're going to do. Whereas on the Labour side, I think the only basis on which there would be support for Norway is if it was going to be the permanent arrangement. So I think there's a big gulf between a short period of time and a permanent arrangement. So I don't see Norway happening. And I think we will end up in the referendum with a straight choice between whether we stay in the European Union or whether well, we end up uh, leaving without a deal. Graham, would you be happy if you saw a, se- if you saw a second referendum with Remain still on the ballot paper? Um, I would not be happy. I would be very offended about the slap, the, the despicable insult to our democracy to be asked to vote again, but I would not fear another referendum, because next time round it won't just be about Brexit, it'll be about our democracy, and I think we will yes. wipe the floor with those trying to upset our democracy and, and keep us in the European Union. I, Graham, I agree with that completely. I think the very act of being asked to vote again would bring out something remarkably Anglo-Saxon. Yeah, but c- can I just say, the idea that it's undemocratic to ask people to vote is of course a contradiction in terms. Well, well then the, the supreme in that exercise, the, first one. The, the supreme exercise of democracy is to ask people to vote when there's a big issue that needs to be sorted. And this issue about whether we do or don't go ahead with Theresa May's deal, that is the biggest issue well, facing no, 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 the country at the moment. And the, people, want, people want to have their own say on it. The legislation is perfectly clear. Article 50 is perfectly clear. 500 MPs, 498, voted for it. And it said... We leave with a settlement or we leave with no deal. Yeah, but the, 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 the reality, we have two choices here. The reality of now is we have Theresa May's deal there, and the question is, do we want it or do we not? No, no, and we I think no a deal. referendum. I think a referendum is the way of sorting out that biggest I don't business. think, Andrew Adonis, you're ever going to accept what happened back in 2016. I don't think you and your fellow uh, Davos-type people will ever accept and, this. No, I wasn't you in love, Davos. Big, I've been you in love big this government. Week. You love big I've, government. I've been in the red lion pub with you, Nigel, this I week. Know, debating I know, Brexit. But, I haven't been anywhere near Davos. But that was at the coffee so, time of the yeah, day, wasn't so, uh, it? So, so we didn't do that. Andrew Adonis, we have completely different interpretations of what's happened in this country over the course of the last few years. I want to thank you once again for coming into the studio. I want to thank you for taking the calls and thank the callers too. And can I thank you? I've really enjoyed it. Good. Terrific. Right. Well, I'll be back tomorrow at 6pm for the Nigel Farage show as normal. Um, coming up at three o'clock today, it's Aisha Hazarika. But up next, it's Majid Nawaz. Thank you, Nigel. And fascinating conversation, Gibbs. Coming up, many public school boys... Deli- <laughs>